Modern chemistry seemed to promise man not only solutions to every clothing problem, but the availability of every type of insecticide to control and destroy any undesirable insect. In a few score years, humans sprayed so much insecticide that it poisoned crops, polluted rivers, and even contaminated the underground water bodies. All this was done without even winning the battle against the so-called harmful insects. Very often they became resistant to the poisons more rapidly than new ones could be created. Is there an alternative to the escalation of the chemical war? An alternative does exist, and it's called biological warfare. It's based on a simple strategy that's safe and clean. It involves using the enemies of our enemies as our allies. In other words, using the parasitic organisms or predators of the insects that destroy crops as a defensive weapon against them. Already many years ago, the Italian scientist Mario Pavan thought this way. He was a pioneer in the protection of natural environments, who realized that the innate aggressiveness of ants could be used to benefit wooded areas. The wood ant doesn't hesitate to attack and devour any other insect that comes near its large ant hill made of conifer needles. Ants were already used in this way 2,000 years ago by the Chinese, who brought a species into their citrus orchards to counteract the effect of leaf-destroying ants. Later, during the Middle Ages, the Arabs brought them down from the mountains to the oases to save the date palms from their enemies. This story of the red ant is a partial repetition of these first attempts at biological warfare. Transported from the conifer forests of the Alps to the pine woods of the Apennines, the ants can, to man's advantage, become a real militia. They wage war against the spread of a species especially damaging to trees, the processionary moth. During its primary stages, the larva of the processionary moth constructs a nest of silk at the tip of a branch. This strong, impregnable nest protects its occupants, sometimes in the hundreds, until the moment they leave, usually in single file, to spread over the branches of the tree and feed on the pine needles. Their voracity and their great number produce very destructive effects on the trees they attack. Very soon the wood is filled with dry or dying trees without leaves that are incapable of performing the essential chlorophyll functions. At the end of their cycle, the larvae of the processionary moth, now ready for the metamorphosis stage, descend the tree in long lines. For the processionary moth, this descent to the ground is essential. In fact, the insect digs a small hole and buries itself. Protected in this way, it changes into a butterfly. The wood ants don't limit themselves to attacking only the processionary caterpillars that incautiously pass over their hill, or even near it. They also climb up the tree to attack the larvae, biting and spraying them with formic acid. The battle is cruel, with no chance of escape for the victims. Voracious and aggressive, nimble and quick, besides being numerous, the ants reduce the larvae to impotent insects contorting helplessly under the assault. 
As cruel as it may seem, this is a natural struggle between a predator and its prey. Of course, the fact that man has intervened to encourage this encounter causes the battle to end in our favor and benefit the woods. The ant acts like a perfectly natural insecticide, well-aimed and calculated. Certainly, since Pavan's first research, enormous strides have been made. Research, here we are in the Donegani Institute in Novara, has refined its weapons by studying the chemical messages sent out by the insects and manipulating them to our benefit. This new strategy of biological warfare is based on the synthesis of particular substances in the laboratory. Among the most important are the pheromones emitted by the females to inform the males of their presence and receptiveness. The first task is to obtain pheromones to copy. It's as if science wanted to appropriate an alphabet unknown up to now in order to engage in dialogues beyond its scope. From the genital apparatus of the female, the research worker extracts the specific pheromone. As the result of accurate analysis by a gas chromatographer, the chemical composition is determined. On the basis of the data obtained, he can create a pheromone identical to the original but synthetic. This can be manufactured in unlimited quantities for sale. Next, its effectiveness must be proven. A test is made of the reaction of a male antenna placed on an electro-antennogram. When the air produced by a small plunger on the apparatus shows even a minimum amount of pheromone, an electric charge is indicated on the monitor. This proves that the research worker has reconstructed in the laboratory a molecule identical to the one produced by the female insect. As a result of research work such as this, today man is able to intervene in the exchange of information regulating the mating of insects. He has succeeded in translating their language and so entered into a dialogue with them, creating confusion among them and preventing encounters between them. In order to understand the practical application of these synthetic phenomena, let's go back to the wood with its threat of an invasion of processionary moths. Many trees are already dry, and many others contain the white silk bags in which hundreds of ravenous larvae are developing. The Forestry Corps has placed strange plastic traps in various zones. These contain a very small amount of pheromone from the female of the processionary moth. The males, attracted by the irresistible odor, excitedly squeeze into the plastic sack which closes after them. This system is applied to many infesting insects. Up to now, the pheromones of several hundred species have been synthesized and put on sale. In several cases, the pheromone traps also function as insecticides appreciably limiting the number of males present in a particular area, thus reducing the instances of mating. More often, however, they are put to another use. By counting the number of unfortunate would-be suitors that ended up in the sack, it is possible to evaluate the effective danger of infestation and pass to the second stage of the battle, the spread of a completely natural insecticide, Turigensis bacillus. This is an example of real microbiological warfare. An insecticide is prepared based on the active spores of bacteria and sprayed on the woods from a helicopter. The strategy employed is that of making the damaging insects ill as a result of a generous distribution of germs. Various microbiological preparations are already on sale in Italy. Their action is directed against the infesting species and does not damage other insects, 
For example, the pollinators useful in cultivation. It has the effect of a deadly epidemic among the processionary larvae.